Do you love pickled red cabbage but can't find it in the stores? You know, it's really easy to make at home and this traditional German cabbage is a family favorite of ours. We love eating it with bratwurst. Hello, my name's Lynn Gillespie and I own and operate 11,000 square foot of organic outdoor gardens and 9,000 square foot of greenhouse grow space. And here on the farm, we preserve all kinds of vegetables for winter eating, which makes the grocery store optional for us. So today I'd like to share with you how we make pickled red cabbage that your family will love in seven easy steps. All right, here we go. So the first thing you do is harvest your red cabbage, or you can also buy it from the store. Um, this happens to be a small head. You can get, you know, if you have bigger heads. So if I, the small ones, I would do probably like four of these. The big ones, I would probably do uh, just two. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to cut this in half lay it on its side you're going to cut this again and then you're going to take this rib out right here so this is just like you were making coleslaw and you turn that and then you're going to slice this super thin and you're going to do all uh, either four little heads or two of the bigger heads and it's so pretty look at that color but you want to slice it thin to win so you want this nice and thin Okay, and then from here, you're going to take this, your nice thin slices, and you're going to put them in a pan, and this is some that I did yesterday, and you're going to put this in a pan, and you're going to salt it, and what the salt does is it makes it start to sweat and push some of the water out, so there's water in the bottom of my pan, and you're going to salt this like you were going to salt your dinner, but like twice as heavy, so it's going to take about a half a cup of salt um, for two big heads of cabbage or four small heads of cabbage. And you can put this in a container and you're just going to let this sweat. Alright, so then the next step from this is we want to go ahead and make our brine, which is the liquid that the cabbage is going to sit in. And it takes two quarts of apple cider vinegar, two cups of brown sugar, and three tablespoons of onion powder. So you can put whatever spices you want in it. Onion powder is the one that I like. Uh, the vinegar and the sugar give you that sweet and sour taste. And I really like the apple cider vinegar because it really adds a unique flavor to everything we do. So from here, we got our brine is boiling back here. We want to get that warm because when we put the cabbage into the pot that's boiling, we're going to water bath this. We need to have this warm and this warm. So this is boiling here with just hot water right now, Ooh, and it's hot, and that's getting ready for us. All right, so we're going to just pack some jars. I'm using uh, regular size uh, pint jars, and this is a cabbage that's been salted. You don't rinse the salt off or anything. Everything goes right into the jar, and you can really pack it as tight as you can get it. You want to get as much cabbage in that jar as you can. Oh, man, my mouth is watering just thinking about this. This is amazing winter food, and my family really loves it. Okay, so we pack that down. We want to leave a quarter inch head space so that as the liquids and things are cooling and expanding in the jar, we don't bend the lids. Because if you pack it too full, um, you'll actually bend the lids. I got all my jars packed. The kettle will hold 10 jars. And so we're just going to put this vinegar brine in here. Oh, that's some of the mother. So when you use the apple cider vinegar, the organic, you get what's called mother in there. That's some of this. Hang on just a sec. And it's good stuff for you. I don't need it in my jar. Let's pour that in there. Whoop, one more mother. Okay, once you get that in there, then you put on your lid. And your ring. And then this is going to go in the pot of boiling water. Um, you can use your grabbers. Best $4 I ever spent. 
and you want your brine hot you want that to heat up your jar so that as you're lowering that jar into warm water you don't break the bottom out of it so it's really important to have oops, the jar and the water close to the same temperature so hot brine hot water Okay, in that goes. We'll get all 10 of those in there, and then we're going to boil this water bath for 20 minutes. All right, so we have water bath for 20 minutes, and we turned it off. Now it's time to get the jars out and let that cool just a, just a touch. Uh, so I use my jar grabber. I love this thing. Like I say, the best $4 I've ever spent. You can just lift those out. So I like to set them on a towel so that they can drip and cool and stuff like that. So you do want to check with your county extension office or the blue ball book for the cooking times in your area. Depending on your elevation, you'll have different uh, cooking times that you need to process your stuff at. So you can definitely check with them. Now, if you are interested in learning how we preserve 25 different fruits and vegetables, we have a preserving fruits and vegetables guide that you can get. And it's free. If you sponsor our show, you can find it at thelivingfarm.org slash high-performance-garden-show. Get on that the show page, scroll down, you can get to the sponsor section. And if you sponsor the show, you can get that book plus two different books um, free. And the fun thing about the Preserving Fruits and Vegetables Guide is it teaches you how to freeze, root cellar, dehydrate, or can 25 different vegetables. So. It's a great little book and it's, you know, really how we do so many things here on the farm. All right, so we're getting these out. Okay, so you're going to let these sit here and cool. You're going to hear them, uh, the lids snap down. So once they're cool, this is one that I did before. Um, you want to tap on the lid to make sure it doesn't pop up and down. If it is down, it is sealed. And then this can go on the shelf for uh, up to a year. It usually doesn't last that long here at our house, but um, you can save these for up to a year. Now, when I am ready to eat this, I'm going to pop the lid off. I actually drain out the vinegar water because it's, it's really potent. And then I add, I put the the cabbage in a pan and then I add a little bit of fresh water and then I reheat that to eat it. So if you like it super vinegary, you can boil it with vinegar water, but for us, we need to tone it down just a little bit. So vinegar water off, add a little bit of fresh water, boil it up and uh, eat. It is so amazingly good. 